I asked Warren Buffett, I said, what made you the wealthiest man in the world? And he smiled and he said, three things. Nobody beats the market except a couple unicorns that nobody has yeah. access to. Here's the truth. 96% of mutual funds don't match the market. That means 4% succeed. People don't know what they're doing. They put their money in a 401k, they pick wow. a mutual fund not knowing what it is. So what I show people is not only do you not get the result, but in addition, you pay around 2,000% more than it's worth. Now, I come from a very poor background, and we had no money for food at times, quite literally. And uh, it, was, it was rough. So I, I wanted to make sure money wasn't a, you know, an issue for my future family. So I figured out how to make money. And I figured when I was, I don't know, 23, I figured out how to make a million dollars in a year. I went from 38,000 to a million. And you don't do that by some new strategy. It was a psychological shift as well as a strategy shift. But then I made the same amount of money for seven straight years, even though I built a dozen more companies, I helped more people than ever. But it was like unconsciously, well, you want more than a million dollars? What are you, you know, are you greedy? I finally decided, listen, if I can make a, you know, 38,000 a million, it's not about money, it's like growth. So I went, you know, I'm gonna make three million, but I wanna make more of it while I sleep. And, but then I really began to realize it doesn't matter how much money you make, mm -hmm. it's really your capacity to take your creativity and stop trading time for money. It's the worst trade in the world. Everybody's a financial trader. Yeah. But they don't realize they're a trader, they're trading time, and you can't get more time. So well, the first thing you wanna teach anybody, a, a, a child, a kid, anybody, is that you'll never earn your way to freedom. Mm -hmm. You just don't. You look around and you see you know, Kurt Schilling, if you remember from Boston Red Sox, he made $100 million a year, he's broke. Bankrupt. I asked Warren Buffett, I said, what made you the wealthiest man in the world? And he smiled and he said, three things. He said, living in America, it's great opportunities, having good genes, so I lived a long time. And he said, the last thing is compounded interest. Mm. And we all know about compound interest, but I, I give the example of a book of this guy, Theodore Johnson, worked for UPS, never made more than 14,000 in income in his entire life in a year. And in old age, he was worth $70 million. And how did he do it? All he did was he took a percentage of his income. His percentage was 20%. Mm. Now, his family said, you can't, we can't save any money. But right. he met a friend who said, if you pretend there's a tax, and the tax just took the money away from you, and you never see it, the money just comes out of your account and goes in an investment account, you'll be financially free. So he was disciplined. He didn't look at it. It happened. $70 million by compounding. So... People's mistake is, and kids don't know this, adults don't know this, that you won't earn your way there, but you can compound your way there. Yeah. What I want to do is say, where do you put that money? The second trick is you really have to understand where you're going to get hurt because the fees are just destroy people. 96% of all mutual funds mm -hmm. never match the market. I mean, they never beat the market. Mm -hmm. So I was just on a morning show this morning and, and Michael Bloomberg's, uh, one of his guys in house, some of his money. So I'm, you know, this is the only industry I know of where people think they can be a doctor. They think they can be a financial planner. And I said to him, I said, well, look, the statistics, Warren Buffett taught me this. He said, Ray Dalio told me this. Uh, David Swenson, who took Yale from 1 billion to 24 billion mm -hmm. in two decades. These are people telling me this. Right. <laughs> nobody beats the market except a couple of unicorns that nobody has sure. access to. And I said, I didn't say you're not one of them. <laughs> but I said, here's the truth. 96% of mutual funds don't match the market. That means 4% succeed. Now, what are your chances of picking the right mutual fund? People don't know what they're doing. They put their money in a 401k. They pick uh -huh. a mutual fund not knowing what it is. If you play blackjack and you and I play and you get two face cards and your inner idiot says, hit me, I want to I get <laughs> one chance in a million, I'm going to get an ace. You have an 8% right. chance of winning. Right. If you try to get a mutual fund, you got the 4% chance of winning. So what I show people is not only do you not get the result, mm -hmm. thinking logically, if I hire someone else to do it, they'll do better than me. But in addition, you pay around 2,000% more than it's worth. It's highway robbery. Where in the world would you pay 2,000% more for the same exact product? You can only do it because the financial industry makes things so opaque, so convoluted, and people feel overwhelmed. And, and hard to understand. It's Very like understand. That's why I try to come in here and go, look, time to become the chess player, not yes. the chess piece. Yeah. Let me teach you so you understand what's going on. It's not that complex. They use all these big words, yeah. but when you know what's going on, you don't get screwed, and more importantly, you take advantage of the system instead of letting the system take advantage of you. I have always looked for people that were playing the game at a different level than I am and or, or knew the road ahead. I always tell people, uh, anticipation is power. If you ever play a video game against a child, it's pretty disastrous. It's like, you know, it's not the kid is faster and smarter. If they played this game before, yeah. like eight million times. So they know the first shot's here, the second shot's right. here, the third shot's there, and you're like reacting. So when you're reacting to things, you fail. So my mentors have been people over the year, different people. My earliest mentor was a man named Jim Rohn. Yep. He was a personal development speaker, just touched my life. I think most people don't train their mind and emotions. It's like, mm -hmm. I think the most powerful muscles to me are not physical, as strong as important as they are. It's like 
Faith is a muscle. Courage yeah. is a muscle. Determination is a muscle. Playfulness is a muscle. You know, passion unexpressed weakens. You know, faith untested gets smaller. Yeah. So uh, I'm always, I, I call it deep practice. I'm always pushing myself to the edge, yeah. and pushing yourself to the edge makes you stronger. Well, uh, Sir John Templeton is probably one of the greatest investors in history. He, people don't know his name. Uh, he started out with nothing. And he decided that he wanted to understand wealth. And so he saved $10,000, a huge amount of money in those days. Uh -huh. And when Hitler invaded Poland, he developed a belief. His belief was, you make your money in times of maximum pessimism. Like if you were around in 2008, really? eight, nine, you yeah. remember what it was like, right? Yeah. You could have bought, you know, the Sands in Las Vegas. You could have bought their stock for two dollars and twenty-eight cents today. It's sixty-seven dollars. Wow! It's a three thousand percent return. So people in those times, he understood that, and so what he did was, and everybody thought the world was going to end. He took ten thousand dollars. He bought every stock on the New York Stock Exchange that was a dollar or less, including companies everybody thought were going bankrupt. But we, when things are bad, people think it's going to be bad forever. When right. things are good, they think it's going to be good forever, and they're always wrong. Life's cyclical. So there's a season for everything. So mm -hmm. once we got through World War II and went a few years later, guess what? Those same stocks made him a billionaire. So when I asked wow. him, I said, what's the secret to wealth? His response really touched me. He goes, you know it. You teach it. I said, what's that? He said, gratitude. And I said, why do you say that? He said, because if you got a billion dollars and every day you live pissed off and frustrated, the quality of your life is called pissed off and frustrated. <laughs> right. But if you have nothing, but you're euphorically grateful for whatever you have, you're the richest person that you're going to know. He mm. said, so it doesn't matter how much money you got if you don't have gratitude. So I do the same thing, by the way. I have a process I call it priming, where I get up every mm. morning. I do mine in the morning. I did this radical change to my body, kind of alter my state. And then I do 10 minutes. I never... And my first three and a half minutes is what I'm really grateful for. And I make myself think of at least one of those three that's something really simplistic yeah. instead of something giant. You know, the wind right. on my face, the yeah. look in one of my kid's eyes, you know, something of that nature. And then I do three minutes of strengthening and healing. And then I do three minutes of when I'm going to create my world. And I do that for a minimum of 10 minutes yeah. every day because I believe you have to condition it. You don't just mm -hmm. hope that stuff shows up. And I started reading and feeding my mind. And then I developed this little system. And the system was really simple. And I, so I tell people now, as I say, number one, every single day, you got to feed and strengthen your mind. Mm. Until you do that, you're always going to be in fear. Because fear is automatic. The human brain is designed for survival. It's not designed for success. Your yeah. brain is not designed to make you happy. That's your job. Right. And the only way you're going to do it is if you feed your mind. Because otherwise, weeds grow automatically. My, my coach, my mentor, Jim Rohn, used to tell me, so Tony... Every day you got to stand guard at the door of your mind. You got to mm. watch what's going in because if you're not careful, stuff will go in. Every day I decided I, I used to go to the library because it's the only place you go, and I would feed, I read biographies, I read mm. people's lives, and it make me go, wait a second, as bad as I think it is, the greatest people in the world had it worse. Sure. So there's something here. So you feed your mind. I, I'm, Jim Rohn, you say to me. Skip a meal, but don't skip reading. He said, read 30 mm. minutes a day. I don't give a damn what it is. Wow. And today, I don't mean internet crap. I mean, read something, that, a biography. Read something mm. that's a strategy. Read something that's going to change your life. And the second thing I tell people is feeding your mind's great, but you've got to also strengthen your body. Mm. And you do that as an athlete yeah. naturally. I learned to do that because fear is physical, mm. right? You know where you feel it. And if you go work out, if you go lift, if you go run, even if you're out of shape, you just go for an intense <clears> walk. That experience alone changes your life. Every day in my life, the first thing I do before I do my priming, I am, if I'm at one of my homes, I jump in some hot water for fun, and then I jump in freezing water. And I have, you know, a river, you know, and one of my homes in Sun Valley, and I've got cold plunges everywhere else. So I go in 57 degree right. water, boom. <laughs> and what it does is like it's teaching my brain. I do. I tell my brain what to do, and it does it. Mm. It doesn't feel like it. Doesn't want to do it. And every. <laughs>
cell in your body is alive, right? So it doesn't have to be like two hours with something. It can be something right. you do for 30 seconds, but it's training your body to be strong because mm-hmm. a strong body could strong mind and vice versa. Yeah. The third thing I tell people is find a role model. You know, it, it seems impossible till you see somebody's done it. So, yeah. you know, Ray Dalio is one of the greatest investors in history. The guy was a caddy, right? You know, his dad was a jazz musician. His mom was a homemaker. Right. Um, you know, he's worth $14 billion. And when you start seeing that somebody else can do it, and you see they really did, mm-hmm. you start to believe, you start to get certainty. And then the fourth thing I tell people is it's massive action and constantly change your approach. And then it's find somebody worse off than you are and help them. Because mm-hmm. when you do that, it gets you out of yourself. 